If anyone makes you feel ashamed for having confidence in this, well then shame on them. There's not a lot that as Christians we're supposed to have confidence in, that we're supposed to be boastful in, but there is one thing that we're supposed to be confident about. As a matter of fact, so much so that Paul even affirms this confidence. I'll get to that in a second to what Paul says, but in our salvation, God has literally given us this and has determined that nothing shall separate us from him. When he says nothing, it literally means nothing. And he goes through the gambit of things, a list of things that cannot separate. So whatever you can think of, you name it, you cannot be separated. He's promised that he will never turn his back on us. And even more than that, because yes, we know he's faithful, but what about us? Well, we are not faithful, but he's promised that once he puts his spirit in us, that we will not ever turn away from him. As a matter of fact, if we hear anything that goes contrary, he's, Jesus says that we simply will not follow that, but we will turn on and run away. Our salvation is something that we can have confidence in, the fact that we'll keep our salvation. If you are saved today, you have life going into eternity forever, according to Jesus. This confidence that we can have in it, Paul says, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward for you have need of it. You have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. And some are going to say, well, yeah, but what if you're not doing the will of God? What if you are like those that were that may have been described in a few verses earlier, chapter 10 of Hebrews? But what does Paul say in regards to that? Paul gives us some hope to know that that is not who we are. He says in verse 39, he says, but we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith. We're of the faithful to the preserving of the soul. We are going to be preserved. And the reason why it's important, imagine yourself as being a singer or being an uh, a surgeon, or being a an athlete, anything, or a high wire act performer, you need to have confidence to do the job. Imagine doing any of those things without confidence. You are going to fail. But we have confidence, and it should show. As a matter of fact, notice what was said about the disciples when they had the Holy Spirit in them. Now, they observed the confidence of Peter and John, and understood that they were uneducated and untrained men, they were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. They should see that in us. They should see our confidence, not in ourselves, because the Bible says we should have no confidence in our flesh, but in him. And so they can see that in us, not a proud, boastful look or anything like that, but just this confidence in how we walk, that God is with us. As a matter of fact, there's the same confidence that Paul brags about in us. In Philippians 1, 6, he says, for I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ. Notice what he says. The confidence of what's happening isn't from us. The confidence that Paul has is not generated by anything that we do, by anything that we know. No, the confidence is in him. He, that's God. Remember who the he is, God. Let me say it again, God. He who began a good work in us. He began the work in us. And what does it say? That he will perfect it or complete it. He'll bring about its perfection and in us until the day of Christ. And so he is going to complete what he started. God is not like us. He doesn't start a task and then end the task short of performing its intended goal. That is not God. And so we can have that kind of confidence. If anyone says that we shouldn't have that confidence, if anyone says that what God says is not going to happen, he says this. We didn't write the book. We're just simply reading. He says that. He says we are the ones that will not walk away. There are those that place their faith on the ground who were never saved to begin with. There are those who, who call themselves Christians and live like anything but Christians. Those are not us. There are those who are false converts. We are not those. Those who actually have legitimate faith in Christ. We can have confidence in that if anyone has a problem with that, well, then I say to them, shame on them. The Bible is clear. We will not turn away. He will not turn away from us. He has put his spirit in us. And so that's why he can say he is confident. Paul says that. Paul, he is confident that God, who began this good work in us, will complete it. He'll see it through, which is why he gave us the Holy Spirit in the first place to ensure that it happens. And if anyone has a problem with that kind of confidence, well, then shame on them.